everything. Norman Butts, and he used to sing that song called Fix It. Fix it, Jesus, like you said you would. Charles Mundy call him the the masters of Walton County that man could sing and there was a song I heard him sing once called Two Wings Two Wings that was one of the first songs I heard when I came to Mount Eden Baptist Church oh are you ready mm -hmm. oh yes mm -hmm. said I need two wings Two wings, 
fly away. To win. I, 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 I need to win. Oh, to fly away. To win. Meet me. To win. Oh, meet me, Jesus. To win. And the world can't do me no harm. And then there was, there was another young man that came through that's no longer here, but he's still around by the name of Map Ivy. And Matt would sing this song, if, if you want the Lord to fix it, you got to put it all in his hand. If you want the Lord to fix it, you got to put it in his hand. Come on, man. ourselves. You just mess it up. First, giving honor to God, our Creator, His Son Jesus, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit that sustains us. Mm -hmm. I would like to give honor to our pastor, Amen. Pastor Brooks, and his lovely wife. Amen. Yes, and always Pastor Hendricks, yes. the Reverend Pope, my brother. And any other pulpit guests or ministers that are in the congregation. Before I start into my sermon, I would like to know who that young lady is that's sitting right there behind Leon. You, who are you? Uh-huh. You're who? Okay. Because when I leave, you go with me and we're going by that cemetery up there on the hill. 
and we got to talk to a spirit up there because you look exactly like my daughter. <laughs> Thank you. You're beautiful. If you have your Bibles with you, could you please turn with me to 1 Samuel, the 15th chapter, and I'll be reading the 22nd through the 24th verse. 1 Samuel, 15th chapter, 22nd through 24th verse. And I'll be reading from the King James Version. And when you find it, could you please stand? <clears throat> and it reads, And Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He has also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Amen. You may be seated. My subject for today is it's not about you. It's not about you. And there are three points that I would like for you all to get out of this story. And the three things I would like for you to get out of this is the things that cause us to be disobedient. People, power, and pride. Look at your neighbor and say, people, people. Power, power, and pride. And pride. Right. Let's say it again, people, people. Power, power, and pride. If I may, I would like to tell you a little bit of the story, if you want to bear with me a little minute. Okay. I've got to bring you up to this so that you'll understand the story and the discipline. We have three men that I'm going to talk to you about today. Samuel the priest, Saul the king, and David the anointed king also. Now, you might be thinking why we got to go through all these men to get to your point. It is because King Saul was the first king that the Israelites ever had. King Saul was a good looking man. He was tall. The Bible says that he looked good from the shoulders up. And he stood three feet over other men. So he was tall, dark, and handsome. And he, but the only thing about this, he was from the tribe of Benjamin. And his daddy was Kish. Now, let me just tell you why I want you to know he was from the tribe of Benjamin. I'm bringing that out because. When they so wanted a king and they wanted him because ooh, he said, oh, we want him, we want him. But they did not do their research. Y'all don't hear me. They did not do their research. They were looking at the man. And they did not even do the research. And only God had already spoken and said, the king will come from the tribe of Judah. The king will come from the tribe of Judah. And right then, God was their king. But they couldn't see him. They wanted to be like the other 
people around them. They wanted a king and they wanted him now. And we and, and so God said, Samuel, go over and anoint him for the people. That's who they want. Go and anoint him for him. But when you anoint him, I have things I want you to tell him. The first thing I want him to do, to do is go fight the Amalekites. But I don't want him to bring anything back with him from there. No spoil, no spoil, no nothing. Just fight and come back. Okay. Saul anointed king. Saul was a decent person. He was an obedient person to his dad. He would do his work, and when his dad's donkeys ran away, he was doing all he could to find them. So he was obedient, and he liked for things to be done right. But he got caught up in people. He got caught up in the people and it did something to the inside of him and it lifted him up. These people want me. Oh, these people admire me. No matter what I do, these Israelites admire me. And they, uh, oh, yes. And I'll, no matter what I do, they're going to like me. So they went off to war. And guess what he did? Do you know the Saul brought back with him the king, the Amalite king? And the best spoils that they had, their animals, the best ones. Now, when he was asked why he did this, do you know what he said? Do you know what he said? He said, your people. Your people wanted me to do it. They wanted them for sacrifices. Well, why'd you? Your people. I'm trying to do what the people want me to do. You made me king, didn't you? Because they wanted me. We have to be so careful. When God gives us directions to do something and we allow the people to persuade us from doing the will of God. Because God didn't give that anointing to the people. God didn't tell Samuel to go anoint the people anoint Saul and tell him to do what I want him to do. First thing he did that was so disobedient. I mean, totally against the will of God. Now we got this other little man down here in this other town. He was uh, eight years old. David was eight years old when he started taking care of sheep. He was a little boy. He was out there taking care of sheep. He learned how to play his harp. He, he learned how to fight bears and, and lions. And he was just a capable body. But when God told Samuel to go over to Jesus' house, go over there and anoint me a king. So he went over there to anoint a king, and Jesse had eight boys, all these fine boys, looking, some of them looking like Saul. All the big and tall and dressed and smelling nice. Now, y'all got to get to this smelling nice because they had all fixed up for the ceremony that the dad was having. So Samuel went over there, and Samuel, they said, he said, Here's my boys. Not you one of them. These are my boys. They're all upstanding boys. And you said, do you have another boy somewhere? Well, uh, yeah. My baby's out there, but you know that little old thing's out there taking care of the sheep. He's tending the sheep. He don't really join in on none of this because he got a big job out there tending the sheep. And then daddy was thinking in his mind, 
Lord, if he come up here to this house, he hadn't had a bath, he hadn't been cleaned up, and he stinks, so she stinks. They had a stench about them. Anybody that took care of sheep had a stench about them. Now, y'all remember this now. Y'all remember this. That good-looking man over there being disobedient to God. And here we got this little boy out here with his little stench about him. Come in and Sammy said, this is the one that I would like to anoint and put with oil. What? Can you imagine his daddy? Wait a minute, out of all my good looking boys and all my upstanding boys and all my boys, you gonna get my little sheep boy? Y'all know what? Sometimes when you're looking for a song, and you're looking for somebody fine and educated and very well spoken and preaching the word so deep that you don't understand it yourself. The Lord already has the little sheep boy over here waiting. He's already waiting and he's already anointed and he's already, God has already told him what to do, but you think that he ain't good enough. And they looked around at that little old boy. Even his daddy didn't think he was good enough. He was like, what in the world do you want with a baby? And do you realize that so many times in our lives, we can't see what God has right before us because we're too busy looking for something else that we can't even understand. Do you know, I, I, I wonder sometimes, I wonder sometimes when people are saying, oh yes, I want to be rich. Oh yes, I want to do this. If I could just win this, if I could just do that. Let me tell you something. Are you in line to live a rich life? And when you say you want a rich man, are you in line to go to the places where the rich men go? Do you even know what to do if you got a hold to you a rich man at a mansion? Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Well, I'm going to tell y'all something. You have got to be in place where God would have you to be. Now, see, God's got something for all of us because he said he even give all of us something. And he already told us, don't put our trust in man, but trust in him and lean not to our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. He already told us that, acknowledge him, pray. Let's pray for what we want. Let's ask God for what we want. I don't like that one. I don't like this one. I don't want to be involved with that one because they don't want to go the way I want to go. And do you know, I have been very controversial all my life because I have always had my own mind. I've always had my own mind and I have never got but one whooping in my life. And that was given to me by my grandmom, and I didn't like her no more if she did that. But then, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. I had to repent over that. But I might have needed some, but I didn't get none. Right. <laughs> but let me tell you about that man called God. With me, God had already set me up to do what he wanted me to do because I needed the personality that I had in order to get over some of the bumps and the bruises and the lumps and everything that I was gonna go through. 
See, we don't know what God has set up for us. David didn't know. But in, in, in due time, he ended up over there with Saul because he was a fighter. Y'all know he fought the, uh, the um, Philistine giant. He fought that giant. He killed that giant. And oh, Saul just loved him. I would get him on my team. He would make me look good. He would do what I tell him to do. Number one thing, David went over there and had sense enough to know that he could not wear Saul's uniform. Be a man tall as Saul. Do y'all know that he put his uniform and everything on David? And was going to send him out to war dragging all that heavy stuff. Sometimes, don't you let people do it? They will put burden on you for you to drag around. And you got to have enough independence from God and enough discernment to look at what they're doing and say, uh-uh, ain't wearing this heavy mess. You know I can't fight in this. I might not even make it out here to the warriors with all this mess hanging on me. I'm not this person. I'm not you. I'm taking it off. He didn't go to war with it either. Do you know that all the things that David did, Saul would get the credit for it because he was the king? But he got so jealous. Because the people were looking at somebody else other than him. And he didn't want anybody to take his power. I'm powerful. I'm a powerful man. I don't want nobody taking my power. Come on over here, David. Let me teach all of y'all about the word. And then you get up in here. Bam, let me try to kill him. Shot his bow and arrow, David. He missed David. Shot at him again. He missed David. And I guess you're wondering if somebody up shooting bow and arrows at you, shooting arrows at you, wouldn't you run on somewhere and go home? But he didn't. He knew what God had for him. And he could stand boldly in front of this poor wretched man because with Saul do you know what David what God had done to Saul he had taken the spirit his spirit from Saul now why is this so important y'all because when we coming in with the wrong spirits trying to lead God's people Trying to tell them what to do, and you got some kind of old evil spirit about you. You know, God can't dwell in an unclean place. And his spirit was that of depression and oppression. And the Bible says sometimes he would just go wild after God took his hands off of him. He would just go wild. And would nothing happen but Paul David coming over there playing his harp for him would give him a little bit of relaxation. But let me just tell you something. David was truly an appointed and another man of God because a lot of men would have said, if you think I'm going over there and play this music for that ratchet man, you are crazy. I don't care whether you rest or not. But David was obedient to God because it wasn't about him. It wasn't about David. It wasn't about David. So many times, do y'all know when people come against you and all these old spirits and and they rebel against you and they don't like you, they don't participate. It's not about you. It's about them and their uh, 
there are problems that they have on the inside. There are insecurities. They can't deal with you. And I'm going to tell you something else about these spirits too. When a person of God, a man or woman of God stand, when they really stand for God and they can't be pushed this way or that way, do you know that those other spirits don't want to be bothered with them? They don't want to be bothered with these godly spirits. They don't want to be bothered because I'm going to tell you something. They'll flee. They will flee. If God has given, appointed you or anointed you to do something, stand. Stand in the spirit of God because it will fight all these other spirits. All these old lying spirits. All these old mean spirits. All these old cantankerous spirits. And then we've got people that, y'all know what? I don't understand. I just don't understand. I don't understand how anybody could say that they are a are more. I don't understand that. You know why I don't understand it? Because I have never in my life thought that nobody was better than me. I have always known that people were smarter than me. They had gone further than me and got degrees that I didn't have. They were chosen by God to do something way over there that I didn't have the opportunity or wasn't set up with God. He had put me in the place for me to be there. Because that was not my call. But if I thought if you think I thought they were better than me, you're wrong. And don't you ever think nobody is better than you. And David did not think that Saul was better than him. Saul he thought he was better than David. When God has that true anointing on you, let me tell you, you know it's not about you. And do you know all of the treacherous stuff that people do to try to suppress you and oppress you and put their foot on your neck? They can't do it. Not if you're really walking in the will of God and doing what he has appointed and anointed you to do. It might not happen today. It might not happen tomorrow. It might be a year from now. But what God has ordained, it's going to come to fruition. So you just have to stay prayerful. You just have to stay prayerful. And then we're talking about Saul and his jealousy. And that spirit of jealousy, do you know that spirit of jealousy is a sin, but it sneaks in? It is a sneaky spirit. And uh, you know that when we idolize what another has, eventually jealousy feelings will follow. Oh, I just love that, that she's got. I just love the way she preaches. I love the way he preaches and play that piano and sing that song. Oh, I love that. But you know what? If you are a true woman, a man of God, you won't be jealous of nobody's like callings. Amen. Do you know Reverend Butts can play the piano? He can preach. Amen. He can sing. Amen. I ain't mad at him. I ain't mad at him. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and you know that the deacons here in the church do the best they can. They're doing the best they can. They're doing the best they know to do. They're, they're studying now and they're learning more and more and they're trying to be better and better. Don't be 
jealous of them. Respect them and help them. Forget the past. If you got mad with somebody five years ago, get over it. Just get over it. David goes and he finally, he comes back from war and the women start singing. Who David, David. Then they said, Saul killed thousands, but David killed 10,000. David killed 10,000. Here goes Saul. I've been in I'm the king. And, and I've been off the war too, and I'm a good warrior. And all the people love me, and they elected me, and I'm here, and here comes this little runt here. Gonna get more praises than I got. But will y'all listen to what happened? Saul killed thousands, but David killed tens of thousands because God was walking with David. And God anointed and appointed David to do this. He did not go ask Saul, how many people do you want me to kill? What do you think I ought to do? And y'all, let me tell y'all something that is just a remarkable thing to me. You know, as black people, we look back on our lives and, and we think about different things that's happened and we think about the prejudices of the white man. But you know, there was a lot of prejudice in the black people too that was it was it was it was in order to make it through and to really get what you want to do you have got to be light-skinned or really smart well i was black with two buck teeth so i just read from sun up to sundown because if you made an A, it didn't matter how you looked. So what I'm telling you all, if God has put it on your life, what I was telling somebody the other night, I said, I don't have, uh, I can't sing, dance, do all these different things. I said, the only thing I've ever done was God gave me the gift of reading and comprehension. Never knew that would be a gift for him. Y'all think you don't have no gifts. Oh, you just don't know what God will do for you. You just don't know. And when we are picking and choosing over people, take it to the Lord and pray and see what you got. Because do you realize that even his daddy thought, that his little boy was nothing. He didn't, he, he knew it was his little boy. He knew he could take care of those sheep and stuff, but the big boys had it going on because they could go out to war. He sent them out, look for it, go take them some food. And even his brothers, they looked down on him like, what you doing out here? You can't fight nothing. You can't kill nothing. He got his little rocks, and there it goes. He did it. One of the most miraculous things in life is when you come from under the rock and you end up standing on top of the mountain. God can do that. God can do that. But it's not about you. Just remember, it's not about you. And then my last point is pride. Sometimes we get, God says that pride, he hates it. He hates a pride for look. He said, for rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Y'all ever, did you all ever compare witchcraft with anything you ever did? And stubbornness is an iniquity like a dollar tree. We've got a lot of stubborn people we have to deal with. Just plain old stubborn. I ain't going along with it because I don't want to. I don't like him. I would rather have somebody 
I would rather have somebody that's got five degrees, uh, has doctor behind his name, and he can preach, and you don't understand nothing he says, because you ain't reading and studying your Bible. But as for me and my house, you can get who you want to get. Because no matter what he says, I'm already reading and studying. And when I don't, I'm like the Bereans. I'm going home to see what he was talking about. I don't take nobody's final word for nothing for me to do for God until I check in his word to see if it's of God. And all this pride, and what, what gives our people so much pride, okay? Gives them so much pride over the other one. Amen. Wait a minute now. Are you the same one? We lived on the same road. We went to the same school. Your mother worked in the same factory mind did. Your daddy put on his overhauls and drove tractors and got this to like mine. We all had to eat what we had to eat. We did the garden and things so they could put food on the table. So what makes you think, oh, I know what it is. <laughs> you go to church and they don't. You go to church and they don't. That's what it is. I didn't say you know the word and you're being obedient to God and they're not. I'm saying you go to church and they don't. That pride is going to kill us people. That pride is going to break us into. Do you know that um when I married, my husband had pics, you know, and uh, he told me, he said, I want you to be the mother of my children. I said, I don't even like children like that. What is wrong with you? <laughs> and then he told me he wanted 10, 10 children. I said, I know he has lost his mind, fell and bust his head on a brick. But do you know that one of the most miraculous things that happened to me was that I prayed mama I said mama help me pray she said help you pray I said you got to help me pray with the husband thing cause I don't know I don't want to live over there in the house with him can he come and live with us So he had to take our furniture and store it in that house over on Green Street and come and stay with me and Mama till I could get used to the fact that I was living in the house with a man. That I didn't know whether I lacked or not. We go through things in life and we go along with things that we're not sure of because somebody told us it was the right thing to do. And we forget about the word of God. What did God tell me to do? Well, I prayed a little bit. I prayed. I didn't know what God wanted me to do at that time. So I guess God wanted me to have a husband and house full of children. So let's go along with it. But let me tell you something God did. God took a marriage that could have been a broken whatever and turned it into most beautiful, beautiful life I've ever lived. He taught me how to love. Won't God do it? Mm -mm. Yeah. So I tell y'all, quit looking over yonder and over yonder and over yonder and trying to figure out what you want. Oh, yes, we, we've got resumes for a pastor. 
we've got resumes that they have sent in to us. The deacon board has not called their uh, committee in yet to even show them to us yet. And when they show them to us, people, it's a lot got to be done. Because we just don't want in and everybody coming in here over our people. And over our children. Do y'all know how important they are? all that stuff feels? I have always feared the unknown. But the familiar always comforts me. I'm comforted by the familiar. And like Dick and Pope said the other night, sometimes we have what we need right in the house and don't nobody pay it no mind. Don't nobody even look at it. They don't pay it no mind, Dick and Pope. They don't pay it no mind. Because they want somebody way out there that they have to pay uh, three or $4,000 a month to come in here and teach so above our heads. Ain't doing us a bit of good. Ain't doing us a bit of good. So I know that time is running out on us. And, and I have had my time here, and I thank God for it, but I always want y'all to remember that people, power, and pride will get you in trouble every time. You've got to really lean on God and pray. Let us bow. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this opportunity to be here with these your people one more time god i thank you for the power of the holy ghost i thank you dear god for walking with me talking with me and leading and guiding me all the way i thank you god for allowing me to just giving me understanding of your word and who am i i never would have thought it god i never would have thought that i would stand here and understand my part Dear God, I, I know that we understand in part and you give us our measure of faith. You are our all in all and I just want to thank you for being with us. I thank you God for everything and I just want these my people to get it in their ears and in their hearts and in their minds and in their souls to understand. What are you looking at? What are you looking for? Because it's not about you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord.